Algorithms are finicky bastards, and so even if you're subscribed to me, even if you've clicked the bell and gone through all the other rigmarole, even if you follow me on social media, you might not see what I'm up to. So I have a mailing list, postmortem-studios-fan-group, which is a bit of a mouthful, but all you have to do is navigate your way there once at groups.google.com and subscribe, and then once a month you will get an email with everything that I've done in the previous month, and isn't that special? Hello lovelies, today we're taking a look at Modiphius's Conan, which if I recall correctly was one of the first books that Modiphius put out, and one of the first iterations of the 2D20 system, which would then be refined, altered, and, and bent out of shape for the various other properties and games that Modiphius has put together. I am not a fan of generic systems. 2D20, I think that they've, they've shown in their other releases, is quite malleable. It can be customized and shifted and moved and uh, made more abstract or less abstract in, in various ways um, to suit the game that they're, that they're creating. The, the game world and uh, the genre emulation that you're looking for. So something like the Fallout RPG which uses 2D20, that's on the more technical end of the spectrum, and something like the John Carter of Mars iteration of 2D20 is more pulpy, more abstract, um, and Dune is even more abstract and, and light in terms of rules. Conan, I think, suffers from being an early release where they were presenting such an early version of the 2D20 system that it tried to be everything, and so it somewhat failed in terms of genre emulation. But that will become clear as we go through the book. So, paging through the book, uh, Mr. James Edward Raji IV uh, doesn't like that so much. Um, I, I saw him mention on Facebook that he finds this kind of video boring, so I just want to preface quickly with why I do it. It's a good way of structuring a review, making sure that you go through everything. It displays the book in a way that people can get a, a real and proper idea of what it is that they're getting, rather than just my face talking to you. And uh, also, it means I don't have to get dressed because <laughs> you can't see anything of me except my hands. So there are a bunch of good reasons to do page throughs as, as reviews. Yeah, it displays the book. I don't have to be on camera. It's not about me. It's about the book. Um, and it's a good way of structuring the reviews. Side note, Raj or Raji is Scottish slang for someone who is crazy or angry. Uh, which kind of des describes Jim, I think. <laughs> Love you, man. All right, so this is the Conan RPG. There have been Conan RPGs before in the past. Uh, TSR had one. Mongoose Publishing did a, a D20 version during the D20 glut. And now we have this one. Possibly this one. Um or the D20 version. Those are the two that vie, I think, for being the most complete um, in terms of the amount of releases and, and source material and so on. Um, System-wise, I think this is a better, more suitable system to the kind of pulp adventure that you see uh, reflected in the, the Conan and other Robert E. Howard stories. Um, but in terms of really grasping the world that Howard was creating, I think possibly the, the D20 source books are a bit better. Now, unfortunately, I don't have those to refresh my memory 
uh, a friend of mine does and I have read all the D21s I haven't read all the two D21s god that's going to be confusing isn't it okay so you get all your usual intro stuff it does use novelty dice but it's not a fantasy flight games novelty dice situation <laughs> in that you don't need to worry about having the novelty dice you can use normal dice quite successfully um, it just takes a, a fraction of a moment's extra thought the d20s are used for the kind of skill rolls the six-sided dice are used for combat effects damage and special effects from weapons that you might be carrying so it's not it's not too complicated character creation uh, is a bit of a puzzler because basically it's a whole bunch of different templates that lock in over one another with choices and it's not particularly well laid out so it can be difficult to figure out exactly how many skill and, and speciality bonuses you have how many traits you have where to look up the traits and special abilities that you might gain as you, as you go along but if you can puzzle your way through it all and it might be worth someone doing a kind of simplified uh, version uh, of the character creation you do end up with a, with an interesting character with a with a past to them so it's almost like um, a combination of an Artalzorian life path system uh, with the kind of interlocking templates from the Iron Kingdoms RPG so you got your, your background your social standing your sort of not exactly class but um, role or archetype um, aspects of your personality and so on and these all affect your your starting skills and so forth so it's very easy to create a, a brutal barbarian type or a scheming whatever yeah you, you can you can cover all your all your pulp bases through that it's just it's one thing on top of another on top of another on top of another so it's a little bit time consuming uh, for my test character I made Wolfskin from the Warren Ellis series of, of comics and was able to largely create him apart from being a berserker which doesn't seem to actually be contained in this book except in some of the NPCs and apparently is in one of the other books that feels like a glaring insight even though co uh, oversight um, because even though Conan is a barbarian he wasn't really a, a, a berserker but even so that is the kind of thing that people would want to play so having to buy a separate book for that see, it feels like a feels like a bit of a jip um, there are options for random creation there's lots of tables you see you can either choose or roll choosing you can end up with very highly specialized characters randomly rolling you'll end up with something more generalist but it can be hard to to rationalize the the end result there unfortunately now system wise i mean the heart of it is the same as any other 2d20 system you roll 2d20 you are aiming to get under your stat plus skill level um, and then you have like a, a an expertise level below that if you roll under the lower number you get two successes if you roll under the higher number you get one success yeah that, that's the, that's the basics if you do particularly well on a test you gain momentum and once you have momentum you can spend that to roll additional d20s which will allow you to get higher numbers of successes um, this is annoyingly similar to systems I've been experimenting with. One originally designated for a sort of barbarian game, which I may still get around to doing, and uh, that system was also implemented in Kagai Guru Gore Girls, um, which is my sort of Japanese horror um, game. Um, so it, it, it's a nice idea. And it, and it works, it's just annoying that it's so similar to one of my ideas. Each skill also has like a, like a tree of special abilities, which kind of takes us into exalted territory. Um, 
unfortunately. That's not to say that I actually particularly have anything against Exalted, per se. The storyteller system has always been a fairly simple, intuitive sort of sort of system. But Exalted kind of ruined it by having so many different, quite mechanical, weirdly interacting subsystems and, and special abilities and so on that the elegance and simplicity of the underlying system was lost <laughs> under this forest of, of special exceptions and so on. It's kind of like trying to memorize every magic card and all its effects and how they interact with one another. This isn't as bad, but it does still weigh down that initially fairly simple and, su and somewhat elegant system with a whole lot of exceptions and rules about which special capabilities you, you can have, you can go to, and, and so on. And and so on. So, yeah, that's that's a bit of a problem here. That's why I think this being one of their earlier releases, it kind of suffers from that, in that it's almost presenting a, a somewhat complete version of the 2D20 system, when a more stripped-down, pared-back, streamlined version of the 2D20 system may have been better for something pulpy like Conan. It is somewhat grittier than some of their other releases, but I can't help but feel that the John Carter level of complexity and so on is, is more suitable to Conan than this is. Somewhere between the two, ideally, but yeah, the, the, the system weighs itself down um, quite quickly, and as a games master it's quite daunting because for the first few games at least you're going to have to help your players navigate all of these peculiarities. Familiarity will help but for those first few games I think people are going to be making a lot of uh, mistakes and, and overlooking things. I think my ideal systems are ones where you can improvise or come up with your own stuff um, around the kind of various capabilities. Um, like in, in Machinations of the Space Princess, I took the system from Lamentations of the Flame Princess, particularly the skill system, and I applied some of that to combat. So basically, if you want to pull off any weird move in combat, um, you roll at minus five, but then skill levels offset that penalty, so you can roll closer to normal or with a reduced penalty, and that's very easy to customize. Uh, this not so much. <laughs> so, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, there's physical combat, there's sort of mental and social combat. Um, the combat dies, dice are the d6s. If you roll a 1, you do 1 damage. If you roll 2, you do 2 damage. 3 to 4, nothing. 5 to 6, 1 damage, plus any special effect related with the weapon. So if the weapon has a knockdown effect, and you roll that, you might knock someone down. If it causes bleeding or something, it might have that effect, and and so on. Vigor is basically a, a relatively small amount of hit points, and once that's removed, you start taking harm, which are more like proper actual wounds, and those apply penalties to your rolls. And once you run out of your harm capacity, which is different for player characters than it is for NPCs, then you're dead. So that, that's how that works. Momentum is this kind of free-flowing back and forth mechanics. If you do well at something, you gain momentum, which you can then hold on to or spend. And you can spend momentum to give yourself extra dice to roll for certain capabilities or to activate powers or to use for like an, an additional quick action or some of your various talents and so on and, and, and traits they require momentum or they reduce the amount of momentum that you need to pull off certain effects so uh, it's nice but it's another level of complication once it starts interacting with those special traits and, and capabilities there are a lot of options for things that you can do during your turn. That can be a bit overwhelming. 
um, I think again I would prefer something a bit more a bit more free flowing perhaps um, but if you if you're after something more more detailed then this is great for that I just don't necessarily think that that's suited to Conan as a as a setting as a world um, it just feels like it slows down that kind of freewheeling pulpy sort of play that you're probably after if you're buying a buying a Conan game your mileage may have also vary so we have plenty of equipment anything magical is pretty rare outside of alchemical items talismans those sorts of things sorcery is pretty understated in the, in the game it's not hugely powerful but that's in keeping uh, with with Conan's world certainly and it tends to come with a price <laughs> which is also highly suited to Conan's world and the, and the source material so uh, playing magician not necessarily the best sort sort of idea um, there is a world guide it's a fairly small uh, part and, and an element of the book overall but that's fine um, you know Howard didn't actually write that many stories so a lot depends on whether you delve into the successors who used Conan uh, the comic books the films that sort of thing how much you want to incorporate um, and if you're like me you tend to prefer sort of home crafted worlds and so on anyway so you're not going to be as interested but it's a good whistle stop tour of of the, of the cultures and the countries and everything in Conan so you no real complaints there and there is expanded material and ideas in the, in the various source books but I don't particularly think you necessarily need them if you're if you're reasonably creative um, plenty of references to the Conan stories I have that that bumper collection edition with the sort of black faux leather cover with the silver inlay. It's a good place to start. Uh, I think there's a companion volume called Conan's Companions or something, which has uh, a selection of stories from the other of of, of Howard's uh, projects and so on. So the, those are worth picking up. A lot of the stuff is in public domain at least in some places, so I think you can read some of the stories at Project Gutenberg, though some may only be public domain in uh, Australia, which has slightly different rules to everyone else. Uh, but yeah, you can certainly find plenty of resources online. There are Conan wikis and so on, but it, it's nice to have a, a properly researched, properly written set of information here anyway. So, no, no real complaints there. And again, like I say, there's, there's plenty of additional resources uh, in their other books and there's plenty of stuff online if you want more but you get a reasonable amount of detail it's maybe um, maybe a third of the book is the background material games mastering advice if you're new some of this is good some of it I'm not necessarily sure is, is the is the best advice um, oh I forgot to mention the doom mechanic this is kind of a um, momentum for games masters, so it allows you to throw complications into the mix. Not that there's anything stopping you doing that anyway, really. So the best way to use it is to offset the heroic power level. I mean, if you want to be a challenging games master, if you want to throw additional hazards or complications at your players, you don't need a system. For that really so I think I would only really use it to provide momentum to my uh, big bad evil guys my villains my nice set piece fights more than anything else um, that's certainly how I would, I would do it there's also fortune which is another uh, mechanic that increases the survivability of the heroes because when you go for a, a gritty system death can be quite common too common uh, perhaps so fortune um, kind of like fate in Warhammer Fantasy roleplay is kind of somewhat of a, of a somewhat of a get out of jail free card for the players to, to avoid sudden player death syndrome um, 
there's some good advice on what constitutes a Conan style adventure, uh, some examples and so on. Um, and you know, you would you would kind of think that a Conan game in our, our current and modern age would spend a, a lot of time apologising for itself. Uh, apologising for Howard's supposed racism, um, apologising for Howard's supposed sexism. I don't know if it was a condition of the licence, um, but that seems to have been largely omitted from this. There is one brief comment about how Howard did also write empowered women characters. Uh, which is true if you look at the, the, the corpus of his work as a whole. Um, but other than that, it seemed to be blissfully free of that kind of uh, hand-wringing <laughs> and, and guilt. Um, that's a bestiary. You don't need a particularly huge bestiary for, for a Conan game. Um, most of the things he fought tended to be animals or people, uh, with very little in the way of actually you know, huge, powerful, supernatural entities. Uh, you know, there were a few here and there. Uh, but you don't particularly need a gigantic bestiary for Conan. So, you know, this is kind of kind of sufficient unless you get into the sort of expanded lore and the more comic booky and um, film side of things. But I don't think most people um, seeking to play a Conan adventure are necessarily particularly going to be looking for that sort of thing. Uh, if you want to bring more Lovecraftian elements into it with relatively little work, you can bring in creatures from the other 2D20 games that are more uh, Lovecraftian-oriented, I suppose. Uh, you get a guide to some of the most important characters in the mythos um, of, of, of Conan, so if you want to throw them in for a bit of local colour, you can. Not that I would advise it, because players tend to kill things like that. Uh, you do get a sample adventure which I generally tend to think is a, is a bit of a waste of space but I guess there are people who are into Conan that might come into gaming via Conan and in that instance having a sample adventure to show how things are supposed to work or at least to do that after a fashion you know that's that's reasonable. I don't know that I would see this as an introductory game though given the relative levels of complexity and so on. But yeah, I, I think it I think it's excusable to cover that base. Um, the artwork and presentation throughout is pretty good. Uh, the layout is workmanlike, it's presented somewhat like a technical manual with a bit of flair, so you know it is readable. Um, I think the writing could have been improved in some of the system sections, particularly character creation to make it flow more smoothly but it's okay. Um, one glaring omission uh, was nakedness. <laughs> there isn't very much of that in here. And when you think of the pulp sort of barbarian tales, you do tend to think of like nubile priestesses and uh, slave girls and, and things like that. So everyone's covered up um, almost entirely and where there is nakedness it's in the distance and it's kind of low resolution it's not a big thing but it is a is a stylistic thing uh when it comes to conan when it comes to swords and sandals when it comes to barbarian fiction um it's it's, it's noticeable by its absence or relative absence especially if you go back and compare it to the d20 conan days from mongoose where i think on the page background there was a a half-naked woman on the border of every page so I think the uh, the d20 Conan as opposed to the 2d20 Conan um, has the highest nipple count of any RPG to date uh, <laughs> I think but it's kind it's kind of um, it's noticeable by its omission okay so scores style the artworks good with those reservations um, the presentation is mostly good, um, but in terms of the, of the content, particularly character creation, it's not presented in a particularly intuitive um, 
or particularly well laid out way just for that specific. So I'll give it a, a, a 4 out of 5 for style. In terms of substance, there are some omissions. Um, there's quite a few additional books for Conan spreading the material out like that. I, I don't know that you necessarily need all that material, um, but I understand the economics behind keeping a line supported and, and spreading your material out so that people will buy more. It's, it's, it's forgivable from a, from a business standpoint, but really I don't think you need much more than the core book. The system doesn't quite match the setting in the way that Modiphius has tried to tailor the system to the to the settings in other books. That brings it down a bit, but it's, overall it's a it's a solid entry in the 2D20 line, and you can forgive it a lot of things for being the kind of one of the the first early attempts at making it work. So high three or a low four for substance, I I suppose. Um, given the given the cost of the book and everything, so eight out of ten, four out of five, recommended. Um, but you might want to pre-generate characters to make them easier to play, um, or you might want to clip back the system a bit, or use an iteration of two D twenty from something like John Carter to play Conan bringing in some of the more complex elements and so on later on as you familiarise yourself with the game. There you go. Zang. Postmortem Studios sells a wide variety of stock art, well over 500 pieces, many of them by RPG industry veteran Brad McDevitt. These are available for you to use in your personal or professional projects, whether stories or games or anything else. Check us out at rpgnow.com.